Hello, welcome to this online tutorial for labor markets. Uh, I hope you can see the specification in front of you there. We're going to work through some of the key terms and theory you need to know for this section of the specification. Uh, so the first thing I'd need you to do is define what is meant by the demand for labor. So pause the video, write down your definition. So hopefully you've got something along the lines of that. Key thing to take away here is that the demand for labor comes from an employer. Okay, so it's the employers, it's the owners of businesses and firms that demand labor. Second thing I need you to do is pause the video and draw a demand for labor diagram. So hopefully you've got something that resembles this, a downward sloping demand curve. Um, key thing to take away here is the axes being labelled correctly. So make sure you've got wages or wage rate on the Y axis going up the ways and quantity demanded of labour or QD on the X axis. Obviously you can tell that there's an inverse relationship just like demand for a product there's an inverse relationship between the wage rates and the demand for labour so as the wage rate increases employers will not want to employ as many workers as they're obviously more expensive. Uh, the two reasons for that, if you can recall, are the income effect and the substitution effect. So income being the profit a business has, if it remains constant and the wage rate goes up, they can't feasibly employ as many workers, so they have to let some workers go. And the substitution effect is this idea that as the wage rate increases, the employers will seek either cheaper workers are investing capital equipment so they will substitute their factor inputs um, so the next thing I need you to try and identify is what causes shifts in the demand for labor so hopefully you can recall the three reasons so an increase or decrease in the demand for the final product uh, an increase in the productivity of labor and a government employment subsidy as well. So all these will cause a increase in the demand for labor at each wage rate. So for the first one, uh, labor has a derived demand, so it comes from the demand for the final product. So if there's an increase in demand for cars, there'll be an increase in the demand from employers for mechanics, for example, to be involved in the production process. If there is an increase in the productivity of labor, that means that the output per unit of labor input, i.e. each employee, is being more productive if their output is increased. So if their output increases and the firm is paying them the same wage rate, the average cost for the firm will be lower. So therefore they can afford to employ more workers as they're being more productive. And the last one, if the government give firms, gives firms subsidies uh, to take on apprenticeships, uh, to take on more workers, they will be able to demand more workers at each wage rate. Okay, so that's the demand for labor. What about the supply of labor? See if you can pause the video and define that, please. So hopefully you've got something along the lines of that. Key thing to note here is the supply of labor comes from employees. It is the workers who supply themselves to work. Okay, um, same as last time. Can you draw the diagram? So in this case, the supply curve is upward sloping, uh, just like a normal product supply curve. And you can see there the axes, make sure they're labeled correctly. If there was a shift in the supply for labor curve, you need to be able to, to, be able to identify various reasons why that might be the case. So see if you can pause the video and identify a few of them, please. So these are the ones that were in your class notes. All these are um, factors that will cause employees, workers, to supply themselves more to a particular industry or less to a particular industry. So obviously the first one really quickly, if the size of the work, working population increases, the supply of labor in the workforce will increase, so more people can, them, can supply themselves to all occupations. That's the same for migration, if more people join 
the UK. The top one maybe about the size might be to do with things like increasing the the retirement age, so the size of the work working population increases. Net advantages of work, so if there is any, so say the government provide more childcare, that means that you know there's more of an advantage to work in. Uh, so therefore, more women particularly might get back into work. Uh, maybe non-monetary factors as well might incentivize more people to work in a p particular industry. Four entry requirements. So if the grade and qualifications required to do a particular occupation increases or decreases, uh, that will change the labour supply. Uh, earnings in different occupations that people have skills uh, to transfer across will impact something value of leisure time and again labour subsidies, subsidies so if workers are subsidised to join a particular occupation so for example in the past there's been teacher subsidies so that incentivised more people to get into teaching and improve the supply of labour in that particular occupation last thing really quickly just to be aware whenever you bring them two curves together you create what's called a market clearing wage rate and that is when there's a state of balance between demand and supply of labour and they are therefore in an, in an equilibrium okay thank you for that you can obviously repeat the video and have a go at trying to answer them questions again